And today, I'm fortunate enough to be joined by Shay Williams ahead of his FCC debut on June 8th in Liverpool. Shay, I know we've been trying to get you on FCC for a while, so it's great to finally get you matched. I mean, how excited are you to, to compete with full contact contender in under six weeks' time, mate? Oh, yeah, it's going to be boss. Um, looking forward to it now, only a few weeks. And, you know, you train at Aspire and a couple of other gyms around the UK as well. We've seen a lot of the your teammates have a lot of success with FTC as well. So, I mean, have you been wanting to sort of follow in their footsteps and sort of get the same sort of traction with an organisation as big as FCC as some of your teammates have, like Tom Harvey and Hader Khan, for example? Yeah, I'm looking on going through FCC for most of my fights. Um, looking on having a few fights this year and next year on FCC. Hopefully over the title soon as soon as I can fight with no shin buds. <laughs> Sweet. And, you know, this is your, I believe, 20th junior MMA bout. You've got a 19-0 record at the moment. And what, are you just 15 years old at the moment? Only turned 15 the other day, didn't you? Or was it 16? Yeah, it was um, same 15 two weeks ago. Exactly. So, you know, that many fights at your young age, it's an incredible achievement, really. I mean... When you came into sport, did you picture yourself being as successful as you have been, or have you sort of overachieved or done even better than than you thought you would when you came into MMA? So, when I first started, I only done it for like self defense because I used to get bullied and stuff. But um, I started doing a few competitions and winning, and I was like undefeated for years in jiu jitsu, and then wrestling. I competed in wrestling, and then. I didn't really expect nothing else but to win. Like, <laughs> trust me, if I when I lose, it's bad. Um, like I've got like when I lose, um, I lost in jiu jitsu, and the medal just gets left. Like, <laughs> it's the worst feeling ever. So I just, I've overachieved of what I thought, but now it's just a standard. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm just, just staying like that. Hundred percent, and I think we see with a lot of. Uh, young fighters that come into sport, you know, under 15, 14 years old, that they do like to build up that grappling base first. Uh, and uh, we've seen that with your jiu-jitsu ability. It's, it's incredible. But do you feel like as you come closer to becoming a full amateur and, you know, being able to have a, a more open rule set, that your striking sort of caught up with your grappling ability? Because I think we've seen with some of your recent fights, you've been really active with your kicking game, your body shots, the front kicks, especially in that APFC fight we saw in the last October. So do you feel like that strike Striking game has definitely caught up with the grappling that we've we've seen from you from a young age. Yeah, um, I'm looking on striking a lot more in my fights now. And it's it's more entertaining too because people want to see strike. They don't really want to see on the floor that much. They do, but they don't. Like, I'm looking on striking a lot more in my next fight. Like, it's going to be quite fun. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I don't think you should discredit the grappling side of your game because it's not like you're having sort of lay and pray fights. A lot of the time you're getting these guys out of there and you're subbing them in the first couple of rounds. So it's not exactly like you're a boring grappler. But, I mean, coming up to the fight that we've got you matched for FCC 38, you know, I was really pleased to hear that they found your fight because when you've got a 19 and no 15-year-old, it's, it's really, really difficult to find yeah. people. You have to message people around the globe, literally. It's, it's impossible. And I'm impressed that they found someone with 50 fights worth of experience that can be against you in Kangsup. So, I mean, when they offered you that fight, how quickly did you accept it? And is this the sort of fights that you're after, the ones with the guys with more experience than you, that's really going to prepare you for when you turn into a full amateur? Oh, yeah. I'm not looking on going backwards. I'm looking on trying to find opponents who give me harder fights. And I'm not, like, I won't turn down a single fight. Like, anyone anyone who's put the name down to fight me, I'll fight them. It's just so little people want to fight. So, anyone... 100%. Yeah. You know, I see a lot of similarities between you and, and, and Curtis and Connor because whenever I was interviewing them as early amateurs, they would just say they'd want anybody. The problem we were having was finding them people. But, you know, we always manage yeah. to do it. So, you know, we look good to see you potentially follow down their footsteps as well. I mean, going into this fight and your previous ones as well, do you like to watch your opponent's fight footage and sort of see their game plan and their style? Or do you leave that to your coaches and they sort of prepare you for a well-rounded display and you're sort of ready for whatever comes at you? Or do you like to sort of have a strategy when you go into these fights? So when you step in, it's like, as when you when the cage locked, it's just a look at the draw, really, because they could have been doing something else. 
but I just make sure I try and train with people who've got all the different styles. Like, I when I was in Thailand, there's so many different bodies. Like, you just find the new different styles and trying to count with them. And then when I got back, I I'll be honest with you, I don't really watch me fights. I I, I hate watching my fights. Never mind other people's fights. So like, I just wanna. I like the surprise. Like I, my last fight on EPFC, I watched them a tiny bit because I seen he was fighting bare knuckle, but I don't really watch them. I just know whatever he's gonna do, I've got a counter for it or I've got a strategy for. And you know, one thing that that you might have to deal with that a lot of other fighters like at your age might not be dealing with as much is the best chance to learn is is from your losses and sometimes the the mistakes you make that can cost you the fight. Obviously, because you've not been having those losses in MMA, do you still find yourself being able to improve in between fight? I mean, your results definitely show that you have been improving, but do you find that you're still able to learn from them or is it more these trips to Thailand where you really see yourself improving and you're getting your around the bodies that are higher than you and they're the ones that are able to raise you as well? Yeah, of course. Even if you're not losing in fights, I'm still in in the gym. Like, I'm still losing rounds in the gym, exchanges. So it's just them little tiny details now. Like, when I'm doing pads, I'm always getting corrected. When I'm doing grappling, I'm getting corrected. It's just, like, the minute details that I need to work on. And I'm working on now and just improving. 100%. And, and something we've seen from, you know, professionals at the top of their game in the UFC and also at FCC and, you know, potentially in, in guys your age as well is they really like to visualise their fights ahead of the time and sort of picture how they play out. Maybe not so much, you know, seeing how it ends, but sort of seeing how it plays out. Are you some, someone that likes to do that a lot? And I mean, do you see this fight maybe going the distance or, or do you see it f sort of maybe ending in a finish? I mean, have you visualised how this fight may play out? I see a nice little highlight reel, really. like. <laughs> I'm gonna start. I'm gonna use my hands a lot more this fight. Mm -hmm. Um, been been in with Joel Tonks quite a lot for the past year and bit in a bit. So I'm looking on striking a lot more, giving the fans what they want to see too. Hundred percent, and you know you've been fighting on some really big platforms for your age as well. It's you know your second consecutive show where it's it's been part of UFC Fight Pass. I know this fight isn't going to be on Fight Pass, but you know I'm sure in the future you're going to be hoping to be on that pro card and making a statement. So it's a good chance to put your name out there in front of those eyes. Does part of you sort of drive you to want to go out there and get that highlight reel, like you mentioned, or is the main focus to to leave with your hand raised as well? Yeah, main focus, I'm not going to hunt for the highlight reel. I'm not going to hunt for anything. What happens, happens on the day. It's just the look of the draw, what happens. Like, I know what I want to do when I get in there, but it all depends on what the other kid does. So it's just whatever happens on the day, happens on the day. It's one of them, isn't it? Absolutely. And, you know, just speaking to you, I can tell that you're very mature for your age and you clearly have got quite a good fight IQ. You you understand the game very well for someone who's only 15 years old. Do, do you feel like it's the surrounding yourselves with these UFC fighters and these guys that are five, ten years along in their career that's helped you gain experience, even though years wise, you're still very, very young, but you're still able to understand the game like someone who's been doing mixed martial arts for 10, 15 years? Yeah, of course. Um, I'm literally, whenever I'm not in the gym, I'm asleep. So I'm in the gym all day, every day. So just picking up little things, even when I'm not training. So it's it's 100% better than not going to school. I just sit in the gym, even when I'm not training. I'll be, sat on, I'll be sat in the gym watching someone on pads or I'll be sat there watching grappling. Or I'll, be, I'll just be sat there watching everything that's going on in the gym. Absolutely. And it, you definitely start to sort of gain recognition for the success you've had as well. Even early in your career, then people like Curtis Campbell, and well, we've seen what he's gone to do. He's been recognised by the UFC. People like John Goodness have spoken about him. But after your IMAF performance, we saw people like Nick Peaty and Adam Catterall really singing your praises and, and saying what a talent you are. And that's with a whole host of other fighters who are also very talented. So, I mean, when you hear things like that, you hear those sort of people giving you praise... How do you sort of avoid being put under pressure and sort of being drawn into the hype? Because you've still got a long way to go, but it must mean a lot to you that you're being recognised still at, at your young age. Yeah, I know so many people who get a bit recognised and it goes to the head. But it drives me more because I feel like people are watching me more. And I feel like if it goes to me, head, I'll get cocky and I'll get replacements. Like, there's people who think oh, I'm the best in the world. 
and start to back off training a bit and start to like go out and stuff like that. But I'm I'm just always in the gym and trying to I just feel like more people watch me. Absolutely. And, you know, I know you mentioned at the start of the interview that you'd really like to sort of build yourself a bit with FCC. And I think it's a, a great decision to as well. I know we're going to love promoting you. How many fights would you ideally like to have this year? Could we see back in September or on, on the November card or maybe both of them? Is there an ideal sort of timeline that you see for yourself? As many fights as I can. I, I'm just looking on getting opponents. It's hard to get opponents. Um, but any fights I can. I just need to make sure I'm not injured or something. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, just finally, I know a lot of the FCC audience are going to have watched you before and they're going to get to see you sort of in your, in your hometown of Liverpool again. But, I mean, to the people that haven't seen you before, in just a few short words, what can they expect from Shea Williams's performance at FCC 38? It's going to be exciting. Like, there's never a dull moment in my fights. So I'm just looking on getting a finish more striking and then give the fans what he wants absolutely I, I love that and and just finally have you got anything to say to those fans as well that are watching this interview and they're still getting starting to get a bit hyped for this next fight of yours and uh, they're really excited as well to see you get in there again yeah um, it's going to be good um, hopefully get the um, get a little highlight reel for them Absolutely. Thank you very much for the time, Shay. I really appreciate Thanks it, mate. Me. And good luck with uh, getting down to, to the catchway and we'll see you on fight night, mate. It's going to be a good one. Yeah, thanks.